welcome to the Acorn Cottage Knits podcast. This is episode 12. My name is Jess. I am a knitter based in Cheshire in the northwest of England. Um, it's been a little while since we last had a podcast episode. Life has happened. Um, I'll probably cover some of that as we chat, but um, thank you for joining me again. Um, general starting admin, so you can find me obviously here on YouTube, you've already found me, so thank you for joining um, on both Instagram and on Ravelry. I am Acorn Cottage Knits. I will put the details down below in the description. So if you do want to uh, hop over on either of those and say hi, generally Instagram is easiest, but um, whatever suits you. Um, always lovely to hear from people who are watching. So um, yeah, that's, I think, all that kind of admin. I was going to do a what I'm wearing bit, but uh, I can't find the name of the pattern, so can't really properly do that bit, but it's a drops pattern, very basic rag loop. It's Knit and Drops Air though, um, very, very comfortable, cosy winter jumper. It's, it's ages ago since I made this one, so if I just double check in my notebook, I don't think I've ever had this ongoing since... Um, da, 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 da. No, so uh, this wasn't a whip that I've had at any point whilst I've been doing the podcast, so I just need to find my page again. So I can't do the proper one wearing bit, but the final bit of admin that I do need to get covered is um, well, firstly, to thank you to those who uh, commented on episode 11. Um, I was doing a just a little prize draw. So I had been gifted a copy of a sock pattern for the fairground socks and I just wanted to gift that onwards basically as well. Um, so the magic of the um, YouTube comment picker online has chosen a winner and it is, uh, if I can remember the name rightly, it's Wild Magic Yarns. I will put it on the screen um, down here. Um, but. If that is you, please uh, drop me a message on Instagram and we can sort out getting that pattern to you. Um, I think that is all of the admin that was in my brain. As you can see, I'm a bit out of practice again. This is the fourth time I've started this <laughs> video today. Um, so I hope that you are settled in with a drink, tea or coffee or whatever you fancy and your knitting or crochet or whatever project you might have on the go. Um, it is a Saturday morning at the minute, the 18th of November. Um, I was going to do this last weekend and then I lost all the daylight before I got a chance to do it. So I thought it was better to wait. Um, so I'm just gonna have a bit of coffee and get myself uh, in the zone for doing this, so bear with me. Right, so we've got a couple of finished objects. Uh, some are here to show you, some I will have to add pictures of. Um, other than that, sorry, as well as that, uh, the finished objects, some new whips to talk about and some future knitting plans um, and then a bit of acquisitions as well. Um, the acquisitions and the knitting plans sort of blend in together but uh, we'll just cover all of that as we go. So the first finished object, and this is one I'm going to add a picture of, um, which I'll do in a minute. So I, probably for as long as I have been podcasting, have mentioned I was making a jumper for one of my brothers. Um, I have probably complained an awful lot about the pattern and about the project. It was not one I loved doing. I did get into the groove of it in the end, but just generally, there's a lot that I didn't enjoy. The translation of the pattern unfortunately wasn't great. Uh, so it was the drops, uh, I don't know the pronunciation, it's Jobris, S-J-O-B-R-I-S I think. Um, it was a drops sky yarn, which I did in the same colours as the original pattern shows. So it was a white and a jeans blue. Um, so the white is number one and the blue was number 12 of the drops yarn. So the yarn was quite nice, it was like a blown chained yarn. Um, the jumper just, it took me the best part of two years. It was for a birthday just two years ago. Um, I got it done just before his birthday this year, so technically I only missed one extra birthday. Um, anyway, the jumper is done. 
I, if I haven't done already, will put a picture of it in. Um, I'm assuming the picture's going up there. I can't remember where on the screen it puts itself in. Um, but yes, that jumper is finally done and off the needles. I'm not going to go into too much more detail about it because it has been a recurring theme. Um, so I think, to be honest, that's learning my lesson as well about the um, the pitfalls of free patterns. Some of the drops patterns are great, but I just think it needs a certain amount of intuition. And yeah, just for one reason or another, I just, there was no love lost over that pattern. Um, I don't know, my hair bands sliding off my head. So that was the first finished object. And I'm, I'm just glad that one's done, to be honest. I'm not gonna give it any more time or consideration. I'm glad it's done. I'm glad he likes it. Um, and I'm glad it's out of my house. Um, so yeah, that is the first one. And the next one I have got here to show you. So I think in last episode, these were a whip still. Um, I'm just gonna put the coffee down so that I don't spill anything. So these are the Follow Your Path socks. It's a pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I'm just gonna bring it a little closer. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so it's got a really nice sort of repeated pattern with some twists and a bit of ribbing across the leg. Um, on the foot it's got the pattern along the top and plain on the back and we've got a heel flap and gusset. Off the top of my head I can't remember which type of heel pattern it was. Um, but anyway these are now finished. I took a while to get them done but that was just um, chopping and changing between too many projects. I used a blue fern yarns, blue fern, blue fern yarns. Um, I can't remember the colourway name, unfortunately, um, but it was definitely something to do with the sea. Um, it was maybe Arctic or Antarctica, or I can't remember. She had a whole bunch of sea themed ones, but I don't know where the label is, so. Um, Unfortunately, that's all the information I have on that. Not ideal, um, but yeah. So I really enjoyed the pattern, um, enjoyed knitting it. This was when I was in my phase of needing something other than vanilla socks. I think I've definitely uh, kind of boxed that one off for now. I've done a couple of things which kind of took a bit more brain concentration on the sock front and I am comfortably back on the vanilla socks now. Um, come on to a bit more of that in whips as well but um yeah so that is the follow your path sock by the crazy sock lady i try and move my hand out the way whilst i'm showing it to you um there's not a really a great deal more to say about that one um i feel like this is going to be quite a quick episode but that's fine if i just rattle through things um just gets me back into the gist of it and one more finished object as well so sorry that is really sliding off my head um this was just a really nice quick sort of palette cleanser you've probably seen this various places before this is the score run headband by laura of Penrose knits um i used phil Kalana for this it's actually phil Kalana from my abandoned 2022 mcal uh, so it's a grey and a white, just held together, makes this nice sort of mild look and it's got a nice sort of pico edging on it. Uh, the pattern had been in my Ravelry for quite a while and I just finally got around to making it uh, quite nice for just wintry walks, just keeps you that extra bit warmer. Um, my sister now wants one so I will be making at least one more. Um, so that is the school run headband um nice little twist at the front i think if i did it again for myself i'd maybe just go a couple of stitches extra on the length um and my sewing together at the front wasn't quite as good as i wanted it to be but i'm generally happy with it um again i'm going to pop in a picture of me wearing that one because it's probably easier to see what it's like so um yeah picture of that one can be added in hopefully at this point in editing then that picture has miraculously appeared um more coffee because clearly my brain needs a bit of extra coffee today right so um that i think 
is all of the finished objects that I have got. Um, next on the list is going to be some whips. Uh, which one shall we start with? So I think keeping sort of on the topic of having dealt with needing to do more exciting socks, um, this whip at the minute, it is a sock whip, goes that way up. Um, so these are the Rustic Cable Socks. Uh, I think the pattern is by Knitting Traditions. Um, I'm considering frogging this one. So that's how far I've got. I've just got a bit past the heel. Now, this is, I can't remember, it's more of like an old fashioned traditional style of doing a heel. And I think I got it a bit wrong. There's a ridge running down there that shouldn't be there. Um, I think I just either kind of slipped or knitted did something with the stitches basically each side out. Um, it probably would flatten out when it's being worn, but I'm not hugely in love with it. I do really like the yarn. So it's like a white yarn with um, blue and pink and purpley speckles in. The yarn is from Rosie's Moments and um, it comes like this. So it is one of their giftable yarns. And if I bring this a bit closer, you can see there are some goodies tucked all the way throughout it. So we've also got some buttons here. Um, I don't know what that yellow bit is, but we'll see when we get to it. Um, possibly a stitch marker, but uh, I'm, not, I'm trying not to pull things out as soon as I see them. I've had a row counter and a couple of other stitch markers already from that. Um, oh, and another one's fallen out. It's a little progress keeper with a little thistle on it so um this is the bag it came in i am enjoying using it but i think with doing the cabling and not loving how that heel is gone and things i think i'm just going to switch back to making it into vanilla socks um and then i'll be able to get to the goodies quicker as well it's been a while since i knit on that one and as i say i've just lost a bit of love for it i have made the pattern before and i liked the outcome but I think just this time round, not for me. So as I say, that's probably going to get frogged and will just become some vanilla socks. Next whip, looking at the list of whips, I think, is that the one I'm looking for? So this is in my um, project bag, Knit Happens. It's a Lauren Austin Designs bag. So this, yeah, it is the one I'm looking for, is another sock pattern. Um, a sock pattern, sock whip, sock project, whatever you want to call it. Now, this yarn is from Siobhan's Crafts. Um, it was one of the sale yarns I got at Spring Into Wool. And it's, so it's sock weight, 100 grams, 400 meters, 85% um, superwash Polworth, I think it's just described as, pronounced as and 15% nylon and the colourway is called Swords Dance. So this is the cake and at the minute I haven't got anything attached to it because I've done one sock. So this is how it looks all knit up. It's just a vanilla sock. Um, I've done a slightly longer leg with a longer cuff because I just think it makes it extra nice and cosy. Um, I started these intending to be for myself but I think these are actually now going to be a Secret Santa gift for work. Um, I've got a couple of Secret Santas going on between various things and so I think that might be what these become. Um, but yeah, so just another nice vanilla sock. Uh, I think on this one I've done a 20 round cuff. Um, I always do a German twisted cast on on my cuffs now so it's nice and stretchy. Uh, just a shadow wrap heel and just a, I call it a normal toe, it's just like an um, alternate knit and decrease rounds to make the toe. I can't for life me remember what the official description of that is, but that is what we've got. So I can go back to knitting on that sock now. Um, as I say, finished the first one, I then had to put that project down for a couple of days because I was just doing a sample sock for what are they called? They've fallen out of my head. Giddy yarns. I should have known that. Um, so Giddy yarns. Um, I was doing a sample sock. I don't know that I can show it to you 
Um, I have got it here, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show it, so I won't do. Um, but that was just a single sock as a sample knit, um, just on a quite quick turnaround. And I needed the needle that this sock was on, so um, I can go back to knitting that one now. Get that finished, nice and ready for Christmas. Um, on that point, are you knitting Christmas gifts? Oh, I've got the label out, so I still put that way. Yeah, let me know in the uh, comments. Are you a gift knitter? What sort of things do you tend to make? Have you done it in the in the previous in the past, and you're choosing not to do it this year? Is this your first year of gift knitting? Um, just let me know. Generally, um, nice bit of inspiration for me, and uh, that also leads me on to my next uh, project, which is now under my notebook. So. Um, this one is in my um, bag which was from, it's an Elizabeth Scarlet bag now, not officially, you know, knitting themed related um, maker but really gorgeous bags, um, embroidery and I just love this one so it's now a knitting bag. So this is what we've got. Um, you can probably recognise this straight away. It is a Musselboro hat. So this is a Christmas gift. Um, it's nearly done. So I've got most of that length. I think we're about ready to start some um, decreases at the far end. So uh, oh, I'll just show you my uh, needle stoppers as well because they are very cute. Um, one of those is coming unscrewed, let's tighten that so we don't lose the stitches. So these little, I don't know if the lambs are alpacas, but very cute needle stoppers. Those were from Beautiful Knitters in London. I went down to London recently with people from my knitting group. I will show you a bit more of that towards the end. But yes, so this is my Musselboro. I am knitting it in Cascade Heritage. So... It's the 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, uh, so it's a four ply kind of sock weight. Colour is 5608, which, oh, what was it called? No, I didn't write that bit down. Maybe it was pine or something, it's something to do with trees or nature. Um, but anyway, I have got this much left of the original cake. It's, I think last time I weighed it, it's just over 10 grams. Um, the hat isn't the full length that it says to be, but I don't want to run out and end up playing yarn chicken. So I think I'm going to start doing my decreases now. I think I used about 10 grams to do the top increases. So if we're mirroring that, that should work pretty well. Um, I knit generally my muscle bar hats on three millimeter needles. I just have to double check that. Um, so on the three millimetres I'm using Chalgu um, and to do the increase section at the top I used again three millimetres but they were Knit Pro DPNs. Um, the more I'm using circulars over DPNs for things the more I do agree with people who are calling them devil sticks. Um, necessary evil really to get that bit of the project done but certainly as soon as I am past the increases I am very happy to have it on the circulars and um, it's actually been really quick that project um, I'm just going to grab, I've got two notebooks here, I've got the one that I've got my podcast notes in and then I've got another one now this, I don't know if you can read that, I always get confused as to whether this flips what I can see and what you can see but the notebook is, it says Acorn Cottage Knits on the front which was a gift and this is my knitting journal so I what have I got in here? Um, there we go. So I started the socks on the 1st of November. Not socks, the hat, sorry. Um, just a quick look at the book. So it's got some writing, some stickers. It's just generally a place for me to keep some notes. Um, if I... I'll show you this page in a bit more detail. So that's one of the nicer pages. Sometimes it doesn't always go to plan, but it's just a nice page for me to keep some details in. Um, certainly not the most exciting of project 
books compared to what some people do see that's one of the pages i didn't love so much so i moved on from that um so yeah that's my little knitting journal i might come and do a bit more of a look at that on another episode but maybe not maybe that's just a place for me to keep some doodling um looking at my list then so covered the muscle borrow covered the socks covered the other socks and i think that is everything in terms of active whips um so next up we are going to merge together um acquisitions and future plans so excuse me while i reach across to everything um i have next to me now a wool warehouse bag with a couple of bits in so first up i've got some of the Serda snuggly uh, it's a double knitting and it's a nice brown color so i've got four balls of this and i am planning on making the teddy bear is it teddy? i can't remember if it's called the teddy bear or the teddy jumper um which is by Petite Knit. So this is going to be a birthday present for my nephew. He's going to be one, sorry, I've just found a stray needle, so I'm just putting that away safe. He's going to be one uh, towards the end of December. So I'm making him a very cute jumper. If you've not seen the pattern, it's a pretty basic raglan sweater, but you then stitch a cute little teddy bear face in the front of it. So that is what that one's for um now that's probably the next thing i'm going to cast on i will need to do a gauge swatch for that because we've had a bit of a debate about what size to knit it's got up to so it's got nine to twelve months and then it jumps from one to two years uh after that rather so they know like 12 to 18 month size um i think the nine to twelve months is going to fit him all right um we just between myself and my sister de deliberating what would fit but also last him a while but then not be so big that then he's the right size for it in the summer when it's too hot for it so i think we've settled on nine to twelve months but i'm just going to make sure that my gauge is going to be right for following the pattern on that size um because it's such a cute jumper and i really want him to be able to wear it and get some enjoyment out of that um now the Muscleboro yarn, the Cascade Heritage, also came in this order. Uh, that's actually a point I could probably look at the order list and tell you. Yeah, it was pine. There we go. Um, so that was like nice greeny colour. So the other thing that I got is this hefty ball of yarn. So this, again, it's Serda. I hope I held it the right way up. Um, and this is the jewel spun. It's an Aran weight. The ball is 200 grams. So lots of yarny goodness there. So I got one of these as I've already got some of this in my stash. It was given to me by a friend who had used some of it for a project and had some leftovers. So this is the stash one. So big chunky balls of yarn goodness. Now this one, I think is the colorway glossier and this one the new one with its label on is midnight fjords so i'm planning to use these two together now obviously they are different that is intentional we've got one that's lighter one that's a bit darker um and with these i want to make the night shift shawl by andrea maori so I've not started it yet because we've had gifts to get knitted um, and I'm just going to pop that back in its bag so it doesn't roll away. But that is a plan and one that I hopefully get cast on sooner rather than later. Um, sorry, hair in my mouth. Night shift shawl. The pattern for that, it's written as if you had as it's five or something different colours um, and you chop and change and it's all slip stitches. Now because those have got um, I don't know if they're officially self-striping, but they're all different colours. If you're using them both together, it will be an absolute riot of colours. Um, hopefully with the one lighter and the one darker, it won't be so busy that I won't want to wear it. Um, but the pattern just looks so cosy. Um, I've got plenty of, not plenty of, I've got some uh, fingering weight shawls that I've knitted. And 
they are lovely, very nice and cosy for the right thing, but also I wanted just an absolutely massive chunky shawl. Um, so that covers those. Um, and then whilst I've been on the bandwagon of wanting a chunky shawl, just bear with me, I'm trying to pull, pull a chair towards me that's got the other bags on without knocking anything over. So as I mentioned, I went to London with my knitting group. So um, you may well know Lucy from the This Nanny Knits podcast. Um, so Lucy and I are in the same knitting group. It's the one with the knitting friends. Lucy runs it and a bunch of us all met up in London a couple of weekends ago. I think it was the first weekend in November. Um, so we went to a couple of knitting shops. Now, the second one that we went to, I'm doing this in reverse order just because I am, um, is Knit With Me. So this shop is in Richmond. Um, it's the building that used to be Tribe Yarns and it's now reopened as Knit With Me. Um, so from there, I got three, yeah, three of the Gilead. Um, now it's, I think the colourway is Sage, or it's spelled S-A-U-G-E, uh, so what, Sorge, Sage, I don't know. It's kind of a minty green colour, it's got flecks of brown through it, which I'm not sure you can see. Um, it's starting to clod over a bit outside and get a bit darker, so hopefully the light is still okay. Um, so this is maybe an Aaron or a worsted weight, I can't remember. Um, so get 250 metres to the 100 gram ball and with three of them I am planning to make the Sophie shawl. So again a nice big chunky weight of shawl, be, it's not, obviously not chunky yarn but um, a thicker weight shawl to have. Um, again Sophie shawl is a petite knit pattern so um, she's getting plenty of my money at the minute on patterns but this is what I got from Knit With Me now it's an absolutely gorgeous 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 shop um, the website is now live as well um, but she's got the shop downstairs and then there's an upstairs space which I think she runs workshops and things like that from um, but she just let us go and sit up there and have a cup of coffee and knit um, so we were there for quite a while it was just so nice and cosy and she's just so welcoming um i can't remember the name off the top of my head but the lady who runs it but she was fantastic um so if you are in london and over towards richmond way um it's just slightly further out than kew gardens um but yeah absolutely would recommend taking a trip there um the other shop that we went to i've mentioned it already with the needle stoppers but we went to beautiful knitters so Again, I've got one of their bags, move the strap out of the way, beautiful knitters. Um, they are, I think, based in Pimlico, and from there I got, so I got a project bag, which is just a nice little um, kind of box bottom size, uh, just a little carry around bag really, and I got two skeins of this. So it's Gepard, I think, or who knows how it's spelt, but it's a, uh, so it's called Cash Sock, it's a strong sock yarn with cashmere and the composition, so it's 70% merino wool, 20% polyamide and 10% cashmere. It is so soft. Um, so there's two skeins of this and this is due to be a, what's it called, a mini mock neck tank, I think the pattern is called. Um, now, there were multiple different colours of this and between the, I think there was about seven or eight of us who were there, I would say, well certainly more than half of us, I think, bought this with the idea of making the same top. So, um, yeah, some of them are in was pink, green, some brownie colours. I've gone for this really nice sort of teal blue. It is absolutely my sort of colours. Um, we have a bit of a joke within the group of sort of team pink and team blue I'm definitely team blue and um yeah I'm just really looking forward to that so that's going to be a spring probably late spring cast on 
um, because it's a sleeveless top. So, you know, don't need that just yet. A little bit too chilly for that. Um, so that covers a bit of the acquisitions and what's coming up in the future. Um, so, yeah, first off onto the needles will be the, uh, the teddy bear sweater and then I think I'm not sure whether I'll do the Sophie shawl or the night shift first, but get one of those on the go and get the muscle burrow and the uh, Secret Santa socks finished. Um, that'll keep me busy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is coming up to December. Um, so I am hoping to do a bit of a Vlogmas. I'll probably do similar to last year where I just do a video each weekend. Um, I have a full time nine till, well, nine to five thirty, it's not nine to five, but full time job and quite honestly my day-to-day -day get up go to work come home watch tv is not exciting enough to do vlogmas about um there will be some stuff over the weekends that hopefully will make a bit better content so i'll probably just stick to uh one video per weekend over december um i will mention in vlogmas about advents um rather than go into it now uh might as well save that content for December and we will yeah see where we get to with that now I have got one final acquisition and I don't have it on me so I just need to go and grab it um but yeah so this acquisition just to tell you a bit about it it is a floofy um sort of a goldy ready colour uh, let me just go and get it actually it's probably the easier way to explain it so bear with me right so we are back um and i've got my acquisition here is my floof so i don't know whether you were expecting a mohair but this is arlo he is a golden doodle puppy who's just woken up from a nap um Sorry, I've just had to drop the camera down so that you could see him. He didn't appreciate being brought upstairs um, and he's now just curled up on my lap so you can't see him anyway. Um, maybe I will put some videos, uh, not videos, some images of him at the end because he's just laid straight back down to sleep. Um, so anyway, yeah, we have got a puppy. He, I think I said he's four months old. Um, we, yes, we got him at the end of September which is probably when I last podcasted, just before that. He is absolutely gorgeous and right now he's just gone straight back to being asleep on my lap. Um, so clearly he's not in the mood for saying hello to the great and good of the internet. But let's just see. Hello. Say hello. Now he's enormous already. Um, there we go. Oh, that's a nice cuddle, isn't it? So he is very cheeky when he wants to be. Um, he's only managed to get my yarn once, uh, he managed to swipe a sock, but yeah, he's he's gorgeous, very good, and clearly wants to be going back to sleep, so I just wanted to quickly pop on and show you him. Um, yeah, he will definitely be featuring in Vlogmas and in more things as we go. Um, so this is my uh, new, I don't know, new acquisition and you know, he's just he's gorgeous he's my baby um so yeah we'll just i think let him get back to snoozing i think we'll end the podcast there now because clearly i'm now nap trapped um so thank you very much for watching um please do say hi to me uh pop over wherever just let me have a uh know what let me know what you are working on at the minute uh, as ever, it's great to hear from all of you. It's really good to be back and hopefully I will have some more things to show you soon. So happy knitting or crocheting or whatever, happy crafting and uh, hopefully be back soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.